Welcome to Superhero Pal. I'm your host nerd, Tom Frenkin. And welcome to another edition of Storytime, where I will regale you with another tale of action and adventure. This time we have Chapter 3 of The Return of the Silver Street. My adaption of the Golden Age hero from Joe Simon and Jack Bender, who's now in the public domain. As you may recall last time, the Silver Streak thought there may be a connection between Alderman Joseph Pine and Leon Small, a man who built a bomb trying to kill the Silver Streak. Then in an odd twist, the Silver Streak smashes into Pine's office, answering a call for help from the Alderman. And now, Chapter 3. Shattered glass lay on the floor of Alderman Joseph Pine's office. The glass was once one of the large office windows, shattered by the Silver Streak's timely entrance. As Alderman Pine slumps up against his chair, the menacing black-clad Electrude turns away from him and faces the Silver Streak, who is standing heroically, saying, Okay, that's enough, big boy. The cavalry just arrived. Electrude responds, Well, looky here. The Silver Streak has come to your rescue, Pine. I wonder how that happened. I had nothing to do with it, Electrode. I swear, Pine pleads. Hoping to de-escalate the situation, the Silver Streak lowers his hands. Okay, I can see things are about to get out of hand here. So, um, Electrode, is it? Shut up, Electrode barks. Listen what I got to say to both of you. One of you has to die. The boss thinks Speedy can come over to our side of thinking. So, it's your lucky day, Pine, because... I don't see that happening. So, you die. A bolt of lightning flashes from Electrode's large hand. Caught flat-footed and stunned, the silver streak barely manages to twist his body and drop to the floor, avoiding it. Rather impressed, Electrode says, Well, ain't that something. You actually managed to dodge a lightning bolt. A lightning bolt, echoes the silver streak. Can you do it again? Another blast of lightning issues forth from Electrode's other hand, blasting the floorboards. Utilizing his super speed, the Silver Streak manages to roll away from the blast. Getting up to his feet, he starts to run away from Electrode, who is firing yet a third bolt of lightning at him. Holy crap, thinks the Silver Streak. This guy's shooting lightning bolts at me. With velocity on his side, the Silver Streak runs up the wall, just avoiding another blast and then across the ceiling, back towards Electrude. All right, um, I can't outrace a lightning bolt, but I'm still faster than he is. The Silver Streak then runs back down the wall, delivering a punishing right cross to Electrude's head. As Alderman Pine now cowers behind his chair, it's Electro's turn to be knocked to the floor. The Silver Streak comes to a stop in front of him. Okay, I can see why they call you Electrude. Seated on the floor and rubbing his chin, Electrude replies, You actually hit me. It's been a long time since somebody hit me. Luckily, I can still take a hit. Freak. Taken aback, the Silver Streak responds, Freak? You're calling me a... The Silver Streak's thought is cut short, as he has to avoid another lightning bolt thrown at him by Electrude. This time, though, the Silver Streak presses forward, delivering another blow to Electrude. Yet the blow has little effect as Electrode has charged up his whole body with an electrical field, shocking the Silver Streak's right arm. Slowing down, the Silver Streak backs away from Electrode, gripping his arm. He's electrified his whole body! Then the Silver Streak is blown across the room, as Electrode finally nails him square. Short of breath and with dazed vision, the Silver Streak lays on the floor. Electrode then turns to Alderman Pine. And you! What the hell are you still doing here? You want me to fry you too? No, 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 I, I, I'll leave it to you. Pine quickly gets up off the floor and runs out of the room. Meanwhile, still trying to catch his breath, the Silver Streak manages to get to his hands and knees. Electrude looks over at him. Still with us, freak? With hands charging up with electrical power, Electrude moves in for the kill. Well, not for long. Electrude fires the killing bolt at the Silver Streak, who is using a desk to pull himself up off the floor then manages to slap a large metal standing lamp in between him and the bolt of lightning. Acting like a lightning rod, Electrude's blast blows the lamp to pieces. In shock, 
Electrode raises his arms to protect his face from the blast. Mustering all the super speed he can, the silver streak stumbles against the wall, thinking, okay, I, I, I gotta start thinking, or this guy is really gonna kill me. The silver streak then notices a water cooler across the room and an old fashioned wooden coat rack next to it. Water, the silver streak thinks, that should work. The silver streak races across the room, just missing another lightning bolt from Electrude, who is continuously firing at him. The silver streak grabs the large plastic water bottle from the cooler and throws it at Electrode. Unthinkingly, Electrode blasts the water bottle in front of him, splashing the water all over himself, causing the electrical energy around his body to go crazy. Stand still and die like a man! Our Electrode's final words. Then, grabbing the wooden coat rack, the silver streak swings it like a giant baseball bat, cracking it in two over Electrode's body. Electrode finally drops to the floor unconscious, with slight electrical sparks dancing about him. The silver streak, with the broken coat rack still in his hands, slumps against the wall. Okay, what the hell was that all about? Moments later, as the police are mopping up the area, the silver streak sits in the hallway on a wooden bench with his girlfriend and chief of the patrol, Sharon Miller. She continues to ask him, so the secretary called you for help, and when you showed up, this ape, Electrude, goes nuts trying to kill you and the alderman? No, says the Silver Streak. The big ape let Pine go, Sharon asks. Then, what was going on? To which the Silver Streak responds, That's the question, Sharon. What was, or is, going on? Small Pine and that Electrude? They all seem to be in on something. Electrode even mentioned the boss. So, a conspiracy. Yeah, I, I guess. Ask Pine. I tell him about Small and how he should watch out for himself, and then this happens. Sharon brushes back her long auburn hair and replies, Yeah, well, Alderman Pine said you harassed him, basically making him a target for this Electrode because of your false accusations. Although he does appreciate the save. Taken aback, the silver streak responds, What? I didn't harass him. Did you or did you not barge into his office and accuse him of trying to kill you? Well, yes, but explain why Electrude let him go or why he was even here. Getting a little frustrated, Sharon continues, Red, one of the little joys of my job is the mountain of paperwork I have to take care of. I wish I could be an off-the-record vigilante like you, but I'm not. So I have to finish interviewing the alderman and all his staff, and then I have to interrogate that electrode clown, making sure that you didn't do anything that could prevent a conviction. And now you want me to chase down a possible crime conspiracy between a bomb maker, an alderman, and a supervillain? The Silver Streak sheepishly replies, Yeah? Ah, Red, you're killing me. Look, you know I love you, and you know I appreciate all the good work you do, but my bosses, the power that be in this city, they're going to eat me alive for starting an investigation based on this. Despondent, the Silver Streak is at a loss for words. Sharon gets up off the bench and places her hands on his shoulders. Hey, look. I'll have Becker try working that angle. But this better be an awesome weekend getaway you have planned for us. Oh, it is. It is. The Silver Streak stands up as well and faces Sharon. And you won't regret this, honey. There's something going on. I know it. Yeah, well, Sharon says, don't get your hopes up. And I'll call you later for dinner, okay? With a smile, the Silver Streak replies, it's a date. He then leans over and gives her a kiss on the cheek. Thanks, love. Sharon playfully slaps at him as Becker and the other officers laugh in amusement. Hey, not in front of Becker. To which the Silver Streak says, Becker's next. I better not be, Becker shoots back. The Silver Streak then waves goodbye, running down the hallway past all the police investigators. Bye, love. Goodbye, says Sharon. Becker then stands next to Sharon. Seriously, what do you see in that guy? He's funny and he gets things done, she answers. Unlike you, Becker rolls his eyes. Oh, please. 
As night falls on the city that never sleeps, Electrude, looking a little banged up from his adventures, sits alone in a small jail cell. His despondence turns to apprehension as a small green smoke puff starts to appear in his cell. Slowly the cloud grows to the size of a doorway, and the red-robed green dragon steps out from it. Her succinct voice calls out, Electrude? Getting up from sitting on his bed, Electrude faces her. Boss, I'm rather disappointed in you, Electrude. I made you one of my top lieutenants. Gave you your incredible power over electricity. I thought you knew how important this all is. Electrude tries to explain himself. I, I do, boss, but this silver streak, he was on the pine. And so you saw it fit to kill him. Without consulting me? She questions. With no answer, Electrude lowers his head. You knew I wanted to recruit him. And now you've nearly exposed everything, she says, pointing out the jail cell they are standing in. Electrude tries to plead his case. Boss, you, you can't recruit a hero like him. A hero who operates outside of the law? The green dragon questions. Plus, I have the perfect advocate. I think he will be more sympathetic to our cause than you believe. Electrode tries to continue. He's too dangerous, boss. You gotta put him down. The green dragon's eyes narrow. Are you telling me how to run my operation? No, I was... I am not locked up like a common criminal. No, I am the one who has slowly been building this web, gaining control over this city. For the New World Order. I know, I know. That's right, continues the Green Dragon. The New World Order. Something you don't seem to be able to grasp. What we are doing here isn't just building up a criminal empire. What we are doing will change the world. But I see now you don't believe me. No, I, I do, boss. I, I do, honest. Just get me out of here. You nearly exposed our whole operation, the Green Dragon says. It's all good. Our people on the force can contain this. And you know me, I'm not going to tell them anything. Electrude responds. No, I suppose you're right. Yeah, but I think I will make your job easier. Yeah, Electrude says, confused. Then, as pain shoots from his heart, he grabs at his chest. Ah! It's a real shame that your electrical powers have put such a strain on your heart. Electrude slips to the floor in pain. No! I can make it right! Seems like you were right. I'm not trusting anyone, Electrude. Not even me. Soon the pain and the struggling fits stop as Electrude lies dead on the floor. And the green dragon disappears back into a puff of green smoke. As the morning sun bathes the city of New York, the silver streak, dressed in a bathrobe, walks out into the living room of his penthouse headquarters, surrounded by large windows displaying the, surrounded by large windows displaying the city around him. He says good morning to his faithful manager and assistant, Darsh, who, as always, works on his laptop at his small Chippendale desk beside the windows. Morning, Darsh. Red. The Silver Streak sits down on a large L-shaped couch in front of a large flat-screen TV and reaches for the remote. How's the social media world today? He asks Darsh. People are loving the photos you tweeted about you getting beaten up yesterday. Darsh replies. People are sick. What about the ones of me and Sharon at the restaurant? The Silver Streak says more hopeful. Not as much, it seems, Darsh says with a wirely smile. Well, that's nice, says the Silver Streak as he turns on the TV. The local news report on the TV says, Again, the superhuman, calling himself Electrude, has died in jail overnight. The Silver Streak, with interest, sits up on the couch, while Darsh says, The InStyle magazine interview has been confirmed to finish up on Monday, okay? Hold on a minute. 
replies the Silver Streak. The reporter on TV continues, Electrude was just captured by the Silver Streak after he attacked Alderman Joseph Pine in his office. Incredulous, the Silver Streak says to himself, What in the world? The news announcer continues, Initial reports claim that the electrically charged criminal suffered a heart attack, mostly due over the use of his powers in his fight with the Silver Streak. Now paying attention to the television, Darsh comments, Pretty weird, huh? It's very weird, says the Silver Streak. The one guy who could prove my conspiracy theory is dead. And I'd say that just proves my theory. Getting up off the couch, the Silver Streak goes over to Darsh. Did we get any messages from Sharon about this? Darsh quickly checks the messages on his computer before responding, uh, nope. That's annoying. Then Darsh asks, so what's our next move? You gonna squeeze Pine again? Turning away and walking back to the middle of the living room, the Silver Streak says, no, apparently that's put me in some hot water. Well, didn't you say that Electrude guy said something about his boss wanting to work with you? Yeah. So Darsh offers, maybe you just gotta sit back and wait for a recruitment phone call. As if preordained, the Silver Streak reaches into his robe pocket and pulls out his cell phone. Oh, I think I'm getting a call from Sharon, he says. Speaking into his phone, the Silver Streak says, Hey, love, I was just... Sharon's rather rushed voice cuts him off. Wow, hey, Red, uh, great timing. Why, what's wrong? He asks. Sharon, in a dimly lit room, flanked by two thugs with machine guns, responds, I was hoping you can come by and help me with something. End of chapter three. So what trouble has Sharon just gotten herself into? What's the connection between Alderman Joseph Pine and the Green Dragon? And just what does the Green Dragon mean a new world order? Find out in the next exciting chapter of The Return of the Silver Streak. And thank you all for spending time with me. Obviously, I'd love to know what you think, so please leave a comment. And as always, if you can be so kind to like, subscribe, and notify, I'll keep making these. Take care.